tiger was a bravo cat who lived upon a barge. In fact, he was the roughest cat that ever roamed at large. From Gravesend up to Oxford, he pursued his evil aims, rejoicing in the title of the Terror of the Thames. His manners and appearance did not calculate to please. His coat was torn and seedy, he was baggy at his knees. One ear was somewhat missing, no need to tell you why. And he scowled upon a hostile world from one forbidding eye. The cottagers of Rotherhithe knew something of his name. At Hammersmith and Putney, people shuddered at his name. They would fortify the hen house and lock up the silly goose. When the rumor ran along the shore, growl tigers on the loose. Woe to the weak canary that fluttered from its cage. Woe to the pampered Pekingese that faced growl tigers rage. Woe to the bristly bandicoot that lurks on foreign ships. And woe to any cat with whom growl tiger came to grips. But most to cats of foreign race, his hatred had been vowed. To cats of foreign name, in race no quarter was allowed. The Persian and the Siamese regarded him with fear because it was the Siamese that mauled his missing ear. Now on a peaceful summer night, all nature seemed at play. The tender moon was shining bright at Mossley Lay. All in the balmy moonlight, it lay rocking on the tide, and Growl Tiger was disposed to show his sentimental side. His bucko mate, Grumble Buskin, long since had disappeared. For to the bell at Hampton, he had gone to wet his beard. And his bossin, Tumble Bruttus, he had too stolen away. In the yard behind the lion, he was prowling at his prey. In his forepeak of the vessel, Growl Tiger sat alone, concentrating his attention on Lady Gripplepo. And his raffish crew were sleeping in their barrels, in their bunks, as the Siamese came creeping in their sampans and their junks. Growl Tiger had no eye or ear for aught but Griddlebone, and Lady seemed enraptured by his manly baritone, disposed to relaxation and awaiting no surprise, but the moonlight shone reflected on a thousand bright blue eyes, and closer still and closer the sampan circled round, and yet from all the enemy there was not heard a sound. The lovers sang their last duet in danger of their lives, for the foe was armed with toasting forks and cruel carving knives. Then Gilbert gave a signal to his fierce Mongolian horde. With a frightful burst of fireworks, the chinks they swarmed aboard, abandoning their sampans, their pullaways, and their junks. They battened down the hatches on their crew within their bunks. Then griddle bone, she gave a screech, for she was badly scared. I am sorry to admit it, but she quickly disappeared. She probably escaped with ease. I'm sure she was not drowned. But Sarah ring of flashing steel, Grout Tiger did surround. The ruthless foe for pressed forward in, stubborn rank on rank. Grout Tiger, to his vast surprise, was forced to walk the plank. Oh, there was joy and whapping when the news flew through the land. At Maidenhead and Henley, there was dancing on the strand. Rats were roasted whole at Brentford and at Victoria Dock, and the day of celebration was commanded in Bangkok.